Hi everybody. I hope that you're having a good Advent season and I hope that the pressures and stress of getting ready for tests and things like that isn't too overwhelming. It's a tough time for a lot of us, um, but I know that it's also a very joyful time because we're thinking about Advent. Advent is that Latin word that means coming. So we're thinking about the coming of Jesus. As what I've been preaching about during this Advent is we think about that in three ways. Jesus is coming in history, what we call Christmas, that he came once 2,000 years ago, and we celebrate that event every year. We also think about Jesus coming in majesty. We all know what that means, coming like a king, seated on a throne with all kinds of glory around him, right? And so we think about Jesus' second coming, the one that will happen in the future, as his coming in majesty. And we should be ready for that too. And then the third coming is the one that's a little bit harder to grab our minds around sometimes. It's not the coming in history, which is Christmas. It's not the coming in majesty, which happens at the end of the time. It's the coming in mystery. It's the ways he comes to us in our lives now. Now, we don't see him walking into the room. We don't see him with our eyes or touch him with our hands or hear him with our ears. But that doesn't mean Jesus isn't coming to us. Jesus is coming to us in the sacraments. Jesus comes to us when we hear the word of God read to us. Jesus comes to us when somebody reaches out to us in love. All of those things are signs of the presence of Jesus and how he comes into our lives. And Jesus calls us to help make him present by the ways we reach out to other people in love. That's how we make Jesus present in the world right now in mystery. So those are the three comings we talk about when we think about Advent. I also put up on the board three really important people that we think about during Advent. St. John the Baptist, St. Joseph, and the Blessed Virgin Mary. When we think about John the Baptist, we all remember probably about the camel's hair clothing and the eating of bugs and all that kind of stuff. And that's good to remember all that. But that's not the point of John the Baptist. The point of John the Baptist was he was the one telling us to get ready because Jesus is coming. So he did that in history. But I think the message from John the Baptist is still relevant today. St. John wants us to be ready for the encounter with Jesus. He wants us to want to have Jesus in our lives. He wants us to get rid of the things in our lives that keep us from loving Jesus and for allowing Jesus to love us. So John is calling us to get ready. He knows he's not God. He knows he's just a, a good person, trying to be a good person. But what he's really trying to do is help all of us get ready for when we can see Jesus, when we can experience Jesus and love, and he wants us to get ready for that. Joseph is another interesting figure. He's the foster father, of course, of Jesus. You know, there's not one single word in the Gospels that we have of St. Joseph. Not one. But it doesn't mean we don't know anything about him. We know that Joseph had dreams, and that's how God spoke to him, was in his dreams. And whatever the Jesus, or God spoke to him in the dream, St. Joseph always tried to do, even though it was hard. You think about him finding out that his fiance, so to speak, was expecting a child. He knew he wasn't the father. That was a real hard struggle for Joseph on what to do. But in a dream, God said, don't be afraid, do the right thing, take Mary into your home, make her your wife, and care for her. And so Joseph did it. Then he's told by God in a dream, go to Egypt. If you remember, Egypt is a place where his people have been slaves. Nobody wanted to go back to Egypt. It was a hard travel. There wasn't no travel guides. There was no GPS to get there. There was no cell phone to talk to your family and friends back at home. So he really had to make a tough decision. He had to trust that what God was asking him to do was a good thing for him and his family. And so he did it. So we see in Joseph courage. We see in Joseph obedience. And we see Joseph love. Taking care of Mary and Joseph the way God asked him to do, the best of his ability, because he wanted what was good for him. And that's really what love means. Wanting and working for what's good for others. So Joseph's a great person for us to think about as well during Advent. And finally, of course, the Blessed Mother. There's a lot of things we could say about the Blessed Mother. She's the mother of Jesus. She's the mother of God. She's the mother of all of us. But when you think about what we hear about her during Advent, what we hear is that she wants to praise God. She gets this bizarre visit from an angel. Can you imagine an angel coming into your living room and just talking to you? That happened to her. That's very extreme. She could have freaked out. She could have said, I don't want any part of this. She could have covered her eyes and plugged her ears, but she didn't. She said, I don't understand all of this, but I trust God. And when she went to see her cousin Elizabeth, who was like 80 years old and was expecting a child now, in a miraculous way, Mary praised God. 
That's what she always did. She praised God through her actions. She praised God in her words. That's a great example to us. Sometimes it may seem like what we're being asked to do or to believe or to think or to say is hard. But if it's coming from somebody who wants good for us, if it's coming from our parents, our teachers, our coaches, if it's coming from the, through the church, Mary is a great example for us of faith. And she can, she can say yes to God when things were tough. We can too. And so she not only does she give us an example of that, but she prays for us. If you're struggling with uh, connecting to Jesus, if you're struggling with connecting to the church, if you're struggling in obedience to what people are asking you to do, ask Mary for help. If you really want to be the kind of person God wants you to be, she's a great person to turn to because she will bring your prayers before the throne of her son and ask him to give you the graces, the special help you need to be the kind of person God wants you to be, the kind of person deep down inside you want to be. So as we do this Advent, we think about John, and we think about Joseph, and we think about the Virgin Mary. Please know that I'm thinking about all of you. I'm praying for you. I'm asking these three great saints to intercede for you. I'm asking the Lord to have mercy on you. Please pray for those who are in need, especially for those who are struggling because of the coronavirus, whether it's physical, physically or financially or spiritually or emotionally. There's a lot of people struggling. So please pray for them and ask these folks to pray with you to the, to, to the Lord Jesus, that when he comes among us, we can truly be people of joy. So I wish you a holy Advent. And I wish you all a Merry Christmas and God's peace. Thank you.